Good morning. Hope everyone is doing well. And uh, we're so glad that you've joined us today to learn something new or maybe just to be inspired. And today's session, of course, is how to take amazing family photos on your iPhone with Kate Rankin. So this is iStore Meets. It's a series of workshops and events which is brought to you by the iStore. And we have a whole lineup of workshops and events, and these are done by our best product trainers and industry experts to help you learn more about the products you love so you can connect and create and also get fit and also to be more productive. So the I Still Meets program covers a variety of topics to help you now and also in the future with things like fitness, productivity, education, creativity, and a whole lot more. So these are hosted online and thanks for joining us this morning and also at your closest eye store in the future. So please look out for that. In the meantime, please also go and visit our website, which is uh, myistore.co.za forward slash meets where you can book different topics. And talking about booking for more workshops and events, also be sure to check out some of these sessions taking place soon. For instance, we've got iPhone illusion and magic tricks with international illusionist Elan Smith, and this is taking place tomorrow at 11 a.m. And uh, I don't think you want to miss this one. Also, we have an Apple Watch fitness workshop and a COVID-19 donation drive um, with Rise Women. This is on the 6th of June at 8, 8 a.m. And uh, also another one to look out for is explore how to take portraits on iPhone like a pro with harmonics. And it's also on the 6th of June at 11 a.m. So for today's workshop, we'd also love to interact with you. So please say hello, hello to us in the chat panel. So you'll see there's a chat button in Zoom. Quickly reach out, say hello, tell us where you are joining us from. And then also you'll see there's a Q&A option. So please make sure to use the Q&A option for any particular questions. And then we'll try and get to them throughout the workshop. Um, otherwise, during the end. Lastly, we also have a monthly competition where you could win a 1,500 Rand iStore gift card. So to enter, simply post a picture of your home setup. So where maybe the screen you're watching us on today. And, uh, or maybe you can post some tips you've learned, uh, illustrations on iPad, maybe photos you've taken on your iPhone and put these please on Instagram and Facebook using the hashtag iStoreMeets. Just keep in mind that uh, Instagram and uh, Facebook stories, unfortunately, will not be entered into the draw. So, uh, so then I think uh, happy to say welcome to Kate. So glad to have you back on iStorm Meets and uh, over to you, Kate. Thank you so much, Marius. And good morning, everybody from a very cold Joburg. I don't know how it is in the rest of uh, South Africa or the world where you're joining me from, but man, I've just gone to quickly grab a blanket. That's the beauty of Zoom calls. I've just put a dusty old blanket around my leg so I don't shiver throughout this whole session. Uh, before I go any further, can people just raise their hands? Let me know that you can hear me, that you can see me. Uh, waving hands, waving hands. Lots of people joining from all over, from Derbs, from Gauteng, or from Broadacres, that's just down the road from me. Um, thanks guys for joining. I know it's uh, probably the second most exciting part of your weekend i'm being very facetious because on monday level three happens which if you're anything like me you're going to be camping out in the cold at the bottle stores am i right tell me i'm not the only one who's literally counting down the minutes i actually opened up my good bottle of red last night knowing that i could get in and um go to the shops on monday and get a get some more wine for the pantry um marius thanks again as always guys i just have to say lockdown has been incredibly long and marius uh He's got the patience of a saint, this man. I'm, I'm not patient after lockdown anymore. I've, I've completely lost all sort of anything. I'm done. I'm completely over it. But Marius is just so sweet talking me through all the bug issues on my computer and his presentation. So Marius and the team at iStore again, thank you so much. And thanks to everyone for taking time out of, a, I don't know if it's a busy schedule, but probably an exhausting schedule, trying to manage kids and working from home and homeschooling and all of that. So my son actually yesterday said to me, Mom, I don't know what what um, a month of a day it is anymore. And I laughed and I said, my boy, that is so gram grammatically incorrect, but it actually makes so much sense. So without further ado, let's get into the presentation. Um, so we can talk today about why you are here. You're not here to listen to me talk about my kids because you've got your own kids to handle. Can you guys all see the presentation? I'm gonna ask for this a few times. I'm gonna ask for you guys to, um, 
Raise your hands if you can see stuff on my screen. Yes, raised hand, raised hands. Thanks, guys. And last time I couldn't quite get the chats going. So what I'm going to do is bear with me. I'm going to get my chats all lined up. I'm going to get my Q&As all lined up. And hopefully then I've got a better chance of actually chatting to you guys um, about your questions and stuff. Because I know last, last time I was a bit of a, a tech idiot. There we go. I've got my Q&A. I've got my chat up. I'm very excited. Okay, cool. Right. Thank you for joining me, everyone. It's so nice to be here. Um, and it's so nice to just be able to share my passion with everyone. Uh, like Maria said, and like those who joined last time, my name is Kate Rankin, and I am a lifestyle photographer based in Johannesburg. I shoot all over the country, but predominantly I shoot in, in Johannesburg. I uh, also own a newborn business where I shoot gorgeous, tiny, teeny newborns in my studio, which is on my property. And I just love capturing memories and moments and people. And I love documenting everything from births to babies to just after lockdown, because we have to remember that family and friends is what it's all about. So uh, obviously, people then look at a photographer and they think, well, clearly this is all she does, right? My clients think all I do is take photos of them. Uh, my family thinks all I do is take photos of myself, which you do in lockdown because I've got no one to take photos of. But what I really do is spend half my time editing. It's true. Uh, photographers around the world will agree and nod their heads and go, editing is a huge part of what we do. Uh, and today we're going to touch base and talk a little bit about editing on your smartphone and how to take beautiful photos on your iPhone as well. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, we need to talk. Every single photo that my husband takes of me or my kids looks like this. I remember this moment so well. My, I can't, I can't even see who that was. I think it was my daughter we were in Sun City and she was splashing around and she was so cute and she was one years old. And I said to my husband, please go and take a couple of photos. And he went and he was about nine on the camera roll and every single photo had his thumbprint over it. And when I asked for a nice photo of me, moms, can anyone relate here? Hands up if you also have these terrible photos taken of you by your spouses. Uh, it's awful. All you want is a lovely photo to document your kids, your family, a special moment, and it's blurry and your fortunes are hanging out. You get the idea, right? So uh, I, I'm saying moms because it is predominantly moms who are taking photos of their hubbies. I know every now and then um, if the dad also what is the one who takes the photos. But either way, if you're here, you have for the right reason. And I'm going to chat to you about A, how to make uh, every moment matter, how to take the best photos with your iPhone, and also how to edit them and preserve them and use them for keepsake memories later. Every now and then I'm also going to break to the chat bar and just uh, see what you guys are asking me and chatting. Adele's saying, that's my mom, literally. <laughs> I've done family shoots for Adele. So at least Adele, you know that you've got some, some uh, memorable uh, family photos to keep for later on. Uh, good morning from Cape Town. Sunny Bonani from Durban. Uh, everyone's saying you're not alone with, with photos that look like this. So that's good. Thanks. That makes me feel somewhat better. First question coming in. Uh, I'm wanting to photograph old photographs, uh, excuse me, wow, that's one for the, for the books. <laughs> Basically what Jacob, Zuma, I'm Jacob Zuma thrilled with his mask. <laughs> he says, I'm wanting to photograph old photographs to put into a memoir. How do I go about it? Oh, uh, Sharon, I, I mean, you would probably then have to scan it in. Uh, I would suggest taking it out of a glass frame to avoid reflection, but to photograph old photographs to put into a memoir, I would say you scan it in. There's probably companies out there who are willing to do it as well. So uh, we can look into that for you. Okay, back to my presentation. If you had photos taken of you like that, if all you want is a beautiful family photo where everyone's looking at the camera, where there's no motion blue, where the sun and the light and the setting is great, you've come to the right place. So the first thing you, the first thought you might have is why as a professional photographer who uses this big fancy camera, am I now gonna chat to you guys about using an iPhone? And I've got the lovely iPhone 11 Pro Max and it's wonderful and I'm just uh, taking so many photos with it. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Yes, I shoot on a professional camera, but that doesn't mean that my camera is always with me. Um, I'm sure many of you are like me and your phone is, is basically an attachment of you. I mean, uh, if I don't have my phone on me, I feel a little bit naked. It's always available. I'm always available. Um, it's always charged and the camera icon is always accessible. Whereas with my professional camera, it's normally in my office, in my camera bag. Uh, it's charging for a shoot the next day, which means that 
even though it does take beautiful photos, it's not practical in terms of running around after small kids, getting it set up, putting the correct lens on. Uh, just the other day I was in my garden and this beautiful kingfisher flew and was making the most gorgeous sounds. And I was sitting in my office window and uh, I could see him and he was quite far away. So I bent down and I picked up my camera and I screwed on my 400 lens and of course he was gone. So as wonderful as these cameras are and they are my bread and my butter, you can still take beautiful photos with your iPhone in between having a professional photo wink wink taken by me all right excuse me while i look down i'm looking at my phone as well just for my slide notes it's for a very talented multitask i, I sometimes it's very overwhelming with all these things coming in and out uh, all right and if you hear my kids screaming in the background i'm really sorry they've been banished to the playroom with some sugary treat so i wanted to show you guys this photo because it is a moment that I'm never ever going to get back. And those of you with kids will understand what it's like when you meet your child for the first time. <clears throat> Excuse me. This photo was taken on my professional camera by my husband as my daughter arrived in the world just over two years ago. You can't see it in this photo, but it's pretty out of focus and it's pretty blurry. And it was, like I said, taken on a professional camera. Um, I converted it to black and white. I did a bit of editing and I played around. But to be completely honest with you, this photo would have turned out much better if it was taken on an iPhone. And I'll tell you why, because my husband shot it in auto. If you have a big fancy camera lying around at home and you're shooting an auto, you may as well put it down or learn manual and pick up your iPhone. An iPhone will automatically adjust to the light setting and it'll automatically adjust to the environment and it'll take a much better photo than a fancy camera in auto. So this is just a, an example of sometimes your phone really, really can do a much better job than a professional camera. I must have had a very rough night because my phone's not recognizing my face at the moment. Have you guys found that with masks as well? Gosh, every time I go to the shop and I hold my phone up and three quarters of it is covered by a mask and it's the most frustrating thing having to not put in a pin code. We've become very lazy. Um, all right. So without further ado, you guys have all joined me here today to talk about iPhone photography. And I've summarized it into the top 10 commandments of iPhone photography and basically how you can take incredible photos. Guys, please feel free to jump on the Q&A at any time. Ask me any questions. I will be covering a lot of topics. If I don't answer straight away, it might be because I am going to cover your question later on. Please feel free also to follow me on Instagram. Pop me an Instagram message. Pop me an email. I'm happy to help. I loved hearing from you all last time after last session. Um, and, and, and seeing all your photos and your editing and giving tips, it really, really made me feel like I was doing something of value finally in lockdown. Um, uh, anonymous attendee says, please, will you explain the purpose of live on the camera? I think that's the live shooting mode, you know, when you sort of shoot uh, and it gives you a half second clip. Anonymous, that is uh, for the reason I like it is because you can actually then screen, not screen grab, but you can select the best moment from that half second clip to use as a photograph. Um, the iStore team, I'm also sure, can jump in for more technical reasons. I don't shoot on live that often, purely because I'd rather take five photos and select the best one. But the live mode is maybe if you've got a kid doing something cute, you do have more opportunity to capture the better angle of the photo while they're moving slowly towards the camera. It's also really cute to play, to play back because it looks like a pretty cute gift. Uh, Nikita wants to know what is a good app to use for editing photos. Nikita, that is going to come up towards the end. I'm going to talk quite a bit about editing photos on the iPhone. Before we get into it, though, the most basic, basic thing. We can't become experts until we learn the basics. And I've learned that the hard way this lockdown. Um, I'm actually slightly panicked about level three happening on Monday because I still don't feel like I've had enough time to do all the things I wanted to do during lockdown. I don't know if you're like me, but I thought I'm going to learn how to macram, macrame, Macrami, I don't know. And maybe I should learn how to say it first before I learn how to actually do it. I wanted to learn certain techniques. I wanted to repaint my studio floors. I did that eventually last night, but I'm also a perfectionist. So if I pick up something, I have to know how to do it straight away. And I must tell you, learning photography for me was a huge humbling experience because I wanted to get really, really good, really, really quickly. But if we don't set ourselves up for success by getting it right in camera and getting it right at the beginning, then you're never going to get better because you have to learn how to do the basics, right? So the first thing you need to know about getting it right in camera is 
having your camera easily accessible, there's absolutely no point in having your kids playing in the garden or watching your dog have a cute moment or, or seeing something out and about that's lovely to take a photo of and realizing that a your camera is hidden on page two of the apps in a folder called exercise. So what you want to do is always make sure that you know the shortcuts to get your camera. So you can see on the screen over here, um, my camera icon, and I think it's the same for all iPhones, is on the bottom, I don't know my left and my right, so it's on my bottom right of my phone. And all I do is I click and it, the camera icon opens up. This is particularly useful as well, that it's accessible and easily accessible. As an example, when I'm at a shoot, I shoot my newborn sessions with an assistant for safety reasons and I often ask her to take a behind the scenes photo or a behind the scenes video and it's really just then easy for her to pick up the phone she can open the camera and she doesn't have to ask for passcodes or where on my phone my camera app is available or accessible so it might sound very simple but it's something very basic just to keep in mind the second thing is this because we are always touching our phone and, and holding it and we've got kids and it's going in and under and sometimes in sports bras and sometimes in pockets we tend to touch the back of it very often, which means we are leaving very, very grubby, oily fingerprints. And I don't know if you've ever picked up your phone to take a photo, and it looks a bit blurry, but you think nothing of it. Keep, in, keep a habit going that every single time you pick up your camera, your phone to take a photo, just wipe down the lens with your t-shirt, with your top with a piece of tissue lying around, just make sure your lenses are always clean because it's literally a tiny little way to ensure that you're giving yourself the best possible chance to take a clear photo. Um, just checking here for some questions. Controlling the shutter on an iPhone. Carlos, I'm not sure what you mean by that question. If you can just let me know. I'll try and get into it a bit more about what you mean by controlling the shutter on the iPhone. An anonymous attendee wants to know, will you show us how to then select a photo from the live photos? If we get, uh, if I have enough time, I absolutely will. Otherwise, I'll do some homework and um, we, can, we can investigate it a little bit later. Right. So that is a couple of tips just to make sure that you are prepared. Have your uh, camera icon easily accessible on your phone. Make sure that your lens is clean and make sure that when there's a really cute moment, you can quickly grab your phone and take a photo. And the last tip is um, to keep your phone in a case to prevent scratches. I keep mine in a case. And the reason is it just, because the camera is, or well, the lens is such a delicate part of the camera, if it's in a, if it's in a case and I lay it flat on its back, um, the case adds a little bit of a layer so that the lenses don't get scratched. Again, you might be rolling your eyes going, this is very obvious, or you might, you might actually find it quite worthwhile. Okay. Rule number two, subject matter matters. So weirdly, uh, and I'm a child photographer and I take a lot of photos of cake smashes and newborn babies. Most kids don't like having their photos taken. Um, they find it quite stressful. I think maybe they've got photo fatigue. If, if your kids are anything like mine after lockdown, they see a camera going and they just go, no more photos. And I say, well, I have to, I've got no clients to take photos of at the moment. So my poor children, I've put them in wedding dresses and I've done setups for them. I mean, I even resorted to wrapping up some Easter bunnies and painting on Easter eggs for an Easter shoot. So kids do get photo fatigue and we want to put as little pressure on children as possible so we can make sure that we get a natural photo of them and that we're not pressurizing them into giving a forced smile. Because in my opinion, when your child shouts, geez, they look more constipated than happy. So don't put pressure on them. And remember that candid moments sometimes really are better moments, as an example. Um, just a, a heads up, as you, I'm sure you know, the photos that I'm showing you on the um, presentation today are all taken on my iPhone, obviously. Some of them not planned, some of them with a little bit more planning involved, but basically I just wanted to be true to the iPhone photography and show you only work that I've taken on my iPhone. Um, this photo of my little daughter picking her nose, I'll never forget uh, where we were. We were at the Val Dam in December and these storm clouds were rolling in and the lighting was just magnificent and her hair was wet and she was wearing this oversized t-shirt of her brother's. Um, and I said, Piper, smile. And she shoved her finger up her nose. And it's now one of my favorite all-time photos because it just evokes such a, a memory of a really, really fun day. And it's just so cute and it's 21st material. Um, and the second is a photo of her in the dog's kennel. I mean, I was busy cleaning not the dog's kennel there's a blanket on top it's not an attractive photo but again it's a candid moment and when you look back at memories of your kids we remember those cute candid things more than I think we remember the perfect days right we remember 
the naughty and cheeky and cute things they did. And this is the beauty of an iPhone is it's always available um, and it's always easy enough to take a photo of them without having to set up an actual camera. And there's my daughter screaming in the back in the background. So there we go. One day I'm going to remember that this was cute and not at all uh, <clears throat> annoying while I'm trying to do a live presentation. Okay, so this is a topic I feel very, very strongly about and it's all about light. Excellent lighting. I feel very strongly about excellent lighting. In fact, Mario said to me, <laughs> he's very sweet. He says, you know, there's a setting on uh, Zoom where you can adjust and put a filter on your face. And this is, I don't know why I didn't learn this 100 million days ago, because I don't know about you, but I'm feeling exceptionally haggard. Also, the, in the, this impending talk prevented me from box dyeing my hair. Uh, so I was this close, and then I spoke myself out of it, knowing that I was going to be live on camera in just a few days. So let's talk a little bit about light and just how important light is to a photograph. And I wanted to show you this particular photo. So. These three photos, I actually took them about a month ago before my last uh, eye store eye phonography talk. It's of my son. It was in my garden, so maybe the weather was somewhat warmer, but it was taken at exactly the same time of day. It was taken at about 1, 2 p.m. in the afternoon. Um, and the reason I'm showing you all three is I want to show you how different lighting and moving your subject around or moving something around or, uh, or, or you're placing your subject in a different um, area can make a huge impact on your photos. So I popped them in the middle of my garden in the first photo in direct sun. It's a very cluttered background. My grass is dying. My hose pipe, funny enough, my hose pipe has been stolen during lockdown. So I'm if anyone sees that guy, it's mine, thank you. And um, not a great photo. You can see he's squinting because the sun's cutting him directly in half. The light is in his eyes. It's a very unflattering photo. The second photo then, at the same time, one second after I took the first photo, I moved him into some dappled shade. Uh, and you can see there's a little bit of light around his face, but I also popped him behind my lavender bush and, and I put him on portrait mode and it's just a much more appealing photo because the background's a bit blurred out you can't see the jungle gym in the background you can't see the wall that needs painting and his face is the focus and then the last one all I did was moved him into full shade in my garden popped him behind a leaf to create a little bit of depth uh, and I took a photo of him laughing and to me that's my favorite photo so again three different photos all taken at exactly the same time in the same place um, one being a, a garden, one being a, I mean, I mean, one being in full sun, one being in the, in the leaves. You see, I'm battling to look at these questions and everything. Um, but already you can see just without any editing straight out of camera, just how different and better some of these photos are versus other photos. I'm just going to go to the questions quickly. Yeah, Michael, he said, I love taking pictures of everything. However, nobody takes great pictures of me. Michael, I completely agree. And that's why I've started taking more selfies and we're going to get to selfies. Um, and I'm also going to get to how to get better photos taken of you. So listen up, there's, there's something coming up for you, Michael. Um, Terry, is it okay to wipe the lens with a t-shirt or whatever it is to hand? Don't want to risk scratching the lens. Sure, Terry, you know, of course. I mean, if you are wearing a very, if you're wearing something scratchy, I wouldn't do it. But most of the time our t-shirts are quite soft or a tissue is quite soft. I've I mean, I, uh, my phone, I keep them for two years and before I upgrade and I've always done it and my lenses have always been immaculate. So obviously just be aware of what you're wiping your lens with, but it should be absolutely fine. Okay, so now I wanted to show you what I've done with these first three photos because just because it looks like a bad photo and it's not the most appealing photo, don't immediately delete it. Don't hoard like I do. I take way too many photos and then I don't delete. I don't delete screen grabs. I forget to delete, to, to delete all these WhatsApp photos. So before you throw a photo away, just also play around. And we are going to get onto the editing. But this first photo, which wasn't great to begin with, uh, which was my son scrunching up his eyes, what I did was I cropped the image, I converted it to black and white in the Photos app on my iPhone, and I added in a slight vignette. It's somewhat better, it's still not a great photo. Having now edited it, if I wasn't using it for this presentation, I would have deleted it. The second photo, um, what I did was I cropped the image as well, just to close around a little bit of the distracting background. I applied a preset in Lightroom. We're gonna talk about Lightroom mobile um, as well as presets. I added warmth. I love adding warmth to an image, which means to add more yellow. If you make something cool, you make it a bit blue, which looks a bit cold and lifeless. But again, it really depends what you're photographing. For humans, I always like to make things a bit more warm. 
and I increased the exposure just a little bit. And there in the bottom, you can see the original photo and then the big photos, the, uh, the after photo. And then the last one, I also applied a few couple of tweaks. I cropped it, I applied a preset in light, Lightroom, I increased the warmth and I deepened the background just to make my subject matter pop. Couple of questions coming through. How did you get so much light in the shade? Well, he was, the light was basically, if I can answer, so if this was shade behind me, the light was still coming in. So if I turn myself here, there's a window there and you can see the light coming in on my face. It's not direct light, so it's a diffused light. And I'm actually really glad you asked that question. Um, that question's now gone. I'm sorry, I can't, I can't see who asked about the light, but when taking photos, you want bright light on your subject, but you don't want them in direct sunlight. So if you can get your subject into the shade with the light still coming in on them, but it's not touching them from the middle of the sky, you're gonna get a lovely photo. So if you're shooting indoors, as an example, when I do my newborn shoots in my client's homes, I position my clients on the bed, facing the window and then I stand in front of the window and I shoot them so that the light is coming in around me onto their face. It's the same as a selfie light. It's the same as when you hold up your camera uh, and you turn, you can actually see how light affects everything. So if you are taking a selfie of yourself as an example, never have the light coming in behind you because then it's gonna create this really um, bright, bright area behind you and then you're going to be quite dark. You need a professional lens to really control that, that um, difference and to overexpose. So when using a cell phone, always make sure that it's not direct sun in your eyes, but that light is coming in onto your face. I hope that answers your um, question. Anonymous attendee, do you actually use the ultra wide lens? Are you talking about the um, wide angle, uh, the 1.5 on the iPhone? I do, I actually use it quite often, but for, for these photos, no, I just use it on the normal camera setting. A note on flash. I don't really use flash on an iPhone at night ever. So an iPhone flash is not designed to take um, nighttime photos. What it will basically do is it'll separate you from the background. However, play around with your flash on your camera when you want to get the background in view and your face in view. And this is an example, and it's a really old example. I think it's 11 years old, but um, we were at a wedding and somebody took a photo of us and it was a beautiful sunset. But if they'd taken a photo just of us without the flash, we our faces would have been too dark and only the sunset would have been visible. All the flash did was brighten our faces enough, but it wasn't too powerful that it took away the sunset. So a really nice way to play around with flash is during the day. If you are in a dappled area where there's shadows across the face and you can't find full shade, um, or even if you are in full sun, that flash will help almost balance out the shade and the full sun and will just help create a more controlled, um, uh, better dimensional picture. So if you are battling with the sun, the flash can almost sometimes counter that a little bit and help with, with, with if there's dark patches of, of shadow. Vic wants to know what it means to actually shoot in RAW. So Vic, you don't have to worry about that on an iPhone. An iPhone will shoot in JPEG. Shooting in RAW is basically just a format when you shoot on a professional camera. It means that your image is not compressed. So when you shoot in JPEG, the image is compressed, which means the layers have almost been stuck together. And when you edit it, you make it smaller and smaller. When you shoot in RAW, you're shooting this massive image. And if you can almost think about pages of a book um, and how they open, when you shoot in RAW, it's a massive file. It allows you to play around and edit without compromising on image quality and image size. Um, for those who use Photoshop, it's almost the same as having layers and then you compress the layers to export it. So shooting in RAW just means you have a lot more potential to save an image that's underexposed or overexposed. Keep in mind though, you can never salvage an image that is out of focus, regardless of what you're shooting on. Marcel said, would you recommend editing your iPhone pics on the device or download them for editing on a Mac? I'm concerned that downloading flattens the image to JPEG. So Marcel, it will be JPEG regardless. Uh, and I'm gonna talk about editing and size and compression and all of that. So stick around when I get there because I will answer your question. And Suraj says, if you want to print a large print of an iPhone photo, how do you ensure you don't compromise the quality? Suraj, I'm also gonna answer that when I get to editing. So yeah, you're asking all the questions that I have answers to, this is exciting. It's really very really happens okay so the next thing i wanted to chat about and i'm going to have a sip of water last time i did it and i got to the end of my talk and i felt like i'd swallowed a desert so excuse me why i now battle with with my lid okay 
If like me, you really hated trigonometry in school and you still don't understand anything to do with mathematics, these are the fun sort of angles that we're going to talk about for photography. Because keep in mind, we don't just look like this. And I'm going to talk about this for, for a little bit about angles. So got some more questions coming through. I will get to those now. I'm just moving my chat blocks around so I can see what's going on on my screen. I'm working on my 13 inch iMac. I mean, MacBook, so I just want to have a quick look here. Right, okay, so we're going to talk about camera angles, and these are just three examples of photos that I took on my phone using different camera angles. So this first one is, uh, I remember the day very well. It was me still feeling quite uh, like lockdown was a novelty, and it was week one, and I was having fun with my kids. And I had my son, and I was doing my exercises, and I was pushing him up on my legs, and he went up, up, up into the air. And I somebody asked the question about the wide angle. I put the wide angle on, so it looked even longer, and my legs looked skinnier, which was wonderful. Um, but it made my son seem small uh, and really cute flying up there. One thing to remember about angles is different angles will evoke a different emotion and reaction of the viewer on your photo. As an example next time you watch a movie and I'm going to ruin this for you I studied cinematography and I can no longer just watch a movie and I watch a movie going oh it's raining that means change is happening or these lines are phallic oh she's standing in front of a circular window that's very feminine so you might start doing the same now with angles but if somebody is photographed from above and you're looking down at them they seem very very small and timid and this is how we usually photograph children to make them look vulnerable. It's also really nice to photograph children because it makes their eyes look bigger. Um, if you photograph something from the ground up, it makes them look big and imposing and scary. So often villains are portrayed from a slightly lower angle to make them look like they're leaning over you. Um, if something, as an example, is photographed uh, sort of at a bird's eye view like my daughter here you can get a whole picture in and it makes it look quite sweet so just remember just because you and I I don't know who I'm talking to I'm looking at this tiny green dot I should put a little emoji sticker here but just because you and I when we communicate are looking at each other directly in the eye doesn't mean that there's not 359 other degrees to explore uh, for those of you with small kids I, I can't be the only one who gets really frustrated when they try and climb up on the kitchen counters all the time or they try and pull up on my leg or they want to see what's going on i was cooking yesterday and both my kids said i want to see i want to see but we have to remember if we were on the ground all the time looking at people's shins and knees that's all we are ever seeing they do not have our perspective or the angle that we're seeing yet so we just have to keep in mind that shooting from different angles and different perspectives is going to evoke a very different result this donkey photo in the middle is absolutely not a family or a pet photo but I just wanted to showcase the angle because I shot it sort of with the nose really in focus, which makes them look quite comical. And the resulting photo is a much sweeter and cuter photo than say just a donkey at, I have no idea where we were. I do not remember the environment, but it's just such a quirky comical photo because of the angle that I took and the angle that I used. Right, let's just go and look at a couple of questions. Will you talk about managing photos and storage? I will, Carlos, thank you. We will get to that as well, all towards the end. Um, Anonymous wants to know how I became a photographer. I uh, don't want to deviate too much from this, but I've always loved photos. I, I remember uh, there, was a, there was a bed shop, bed, I can't sure it's still around. And if you bought a bed, you would get something free all the time. And I remember once I bought a new bed just to get a digital camera. It was 1.2 megapixels. I was a teenager and it was the best thing I've ever, ever received. It was my favorite present. I wanted to take photos ever since I can remember. And when my son was born five and a bit years ago, I put myself through a photography diploma during maternity leave. And somebody bribed me to take their newborn photos and I was brave enough to share them. And then my next booking rolled in. And before I knew it, it's what I was doing. And I quit my corporate job uh, just over two years ago to do this full time. And I've never looked back apart from lockdown. We've all looked back because we have no money anymore. And most of us have no jobs anymore. But that's how I became a photographer. It's absolutely my passion. And my heart gets all flattery and excited when I talk about taking photos. And I'm so glad to be chatting to you guys and if anyone has any more questions like I said Kate Rankin photography on Instagram you can also follow me on my personal page which is which is Kate Nicole Kearney okay let's get back into angles so 
this, uh, you know what they say about buying your kids a present and then they play with the box. So we got a treadmill just before lockdown and this was my son lying in the box on the side. And all I did was I lay on the floor at his complete level and I took a photo and to me it's a much cuter and much more effective and striking photo than it would have been if I had just sort of been lazy and taken a photo from above. I'm really, we make an eye contact, I'm at my child's level, there's a bit of depth of field at the beginning of the photo um, and just showing that a different angle can make a bit of a difference in your imagery. The second photo was a footprint, we were walking along the beach and I took my phone um, and if this is the beach all I did was I opened my camera and I balanced it and that allowed for a really nice depth of field because I got a blurry, blurry um, uh, background and a crisp foreground. And so again, playing around with images, moving, getting up, getting down. I think this is why so many photographers have back uh, operations at the age of 40 because we are always climbing on our hands and our knees just to get a good angle. All righty, uh, Adele says, and you are damn good. Adele, thank you. That's amazing. I'm going to screen grab that for when I'm having one of those moments. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, Anonymous, how would you determine the depth of pictures and if and when certain elements can be cut off? I'm going to get into the rule of photography and when you should do depth of field and what the rules are. So you, I will get to that now because there are no rules. That's the ninth and final rule. Uh, Johan Denecker says, please explain the square option. Johan, I will. We're going to get into the square option now and when and when you shouldn't use the square option on your phone. Uh, okay. A couple more angles. Uh, I love this one of my daughter sitting on the pool. I shot from completely above, which made her seem small and innocent. I love the lines of the pool. I love the shadows. There's just a whole bunch of photography magic happening here. Um, and, and that's why I wanted to share it because if I had just taken a photo of her sitting with her feet on the pool, I probably would have got the towels hanging over the ugly pool fence in the background. So also by, by changing your angles, you can often eliminate clutter um, and clutter can really, really ruin a photo. So we need to keep that in mind, but I will get to that shortly. And then somebody asked me uh, if I use the uh, long, the wide angle feature, I did. This photo looks particularly grainy because my husband got the iPhone 11 before I did and he took this photo and then it was sent via WhatsApp and got a bit pixelated. But again, I shot from a lower angle of my son on one of these bouncy bungee things and um, it, it's when not cropped, he looks like he's much higher up in the sky. And again, shooting from a low angle and shooting with a wide angle lens on your phone really makes your subject seem more vulnerable and a lot further away and higher up than he actually was. But don't tell him that he thinks he's very brave for going on this. Okay, the last point on angles is sometimes a small change can make a small change of uh, perspective. I can't see what I've written here. Small change of perspective can make a big impact. Uh, this was me very heavily pregnant. Every time I look at this photo, I cringe and I think, why couldn't I just have cleaned the pool before this photo was taken? Um, it's not your traditional belly shot, but I really liked how it made my preggy belly look massive and my very fat, swollen summer feet look petite and somewhat cute still. And this was ladies back in the days when we could still go have manis and pedis. Oh, how I miss sorbet. Uh, right, a couple more questions. Do those attachments that make your lens wide work well on mobile phones? That's from Marcel. Uh, I know the ones you're talking about, the Olo Clip, they came out about a few years ago. No. I bought them and I've thrown them away the very same day. It's not they don't make they don't make a difference. The the beauty about the new iPhones now is that you can there is the the option and I'll do it now for you guys to um to do the you can see it's normal and then it's a wide angle here and then it's a zoom in. So the the phones have these options built in and I wouldn't honestly waste your money. Uh, you get what you pay for and if you're going to pay a few hundred rand for something it's generally not going to work in my personal opinion there might be a brand out there that does work um Marsha any new photo features on iPhone 11 versus iPhone 10 to give me an excuse to get the 11 yes Marsha I have to admit that the first time I did this talk I was on the iPhone 10 the X and um I then upgraded to the 11 you can still take I don't know what to tell you because I don't want you to waste your money uh, or I don't want to make you spend your money, but the iPhone 11 is pretty great. However, most of the photos in this presentation, Marsha and everyone else were taken with sometimes the iPhone 6 even. So you can take incredible photos if you know how and if you um, know how to edit them on, on most iPhones. But Marsha, go get the 11 because I've taken photos of your beautiful daughter and um, 
just go get it okay and uh don't blame me all right but it's so worth it it's an amazing phone i protect this thing with my life and again get a cover get the tempered glass if you drop it you'll cry all right so do I use selfie sticks and which would be the best one for iPhone, Michelle? Michelle, I've actually, when I do some vlogging or blogging or Instagram stories, I've got one of those um, selfie rings and I've got that little guy in the middle that's like a bracket. So it, it holds your phone in the, in the ring bracket. I don't use selfie sticks. Um, the beauty of the iPhone 11 again though is it automatically goes, if I'm taking a selfie of myself and my kids are in it, it automatically goes from a normal um, uh, the, one, the setting one to a, a 1.5, it automatically goes to a wide angle. So it, lets, it fits everyone in. It's a very smart device, this iPhone. I quite enjoy it. Um, all right. Let's move on to the rule number five. Guys, I'm freezing. Does anybody find that sitting in your house is just bitterly cold? I should be doing this outside. Composition, framing that shot. I feel very, very, very strongly about composition. I hope My hope for you after this talk is that you're going to start looking at photos in a different way. Um, sometimes, often people will say to me, what makes a good photo? But what made you enjoy a movie? What made you enjoy a book? What made you enjoy a scenic drive? It's not just one thing. It's how it made you feel. What emotion did it evoke? And after this, we've spoken about composition, about lighting, about angles. All these things together is going to make a beautiful photos. Uh, a beautiful photos, just like my beautiful English today. My kids need to go back to school, but apparently so do I. Uh, Kim, is there a wide angle option on the earlier iPhones? No, Kim, I don't. As far as I believe, uh, I store tech team in the background, maybe you can answer. But no, I think it only comes with the iPhone 11, the wide angle um, option. A couple more questions coming through. Nick has talked about light and, uh, night mode. Yes, Nick, I actually should have touched on that when I spoke about uh, flash and not using flash. The new iPhones have night mode and they sort of just slow, it, slow down the shutter speed and they adapt to low light conditions. And it actually makes for a much more attractive photo than using flash and getting a red eye and, and all of that. Okay, composition. So I'm gonna give you guys a couple of seconds to look over this. Um, it's the, the, the nine rules, the 10 rules of photography and any photography, whether it's your iPhone, whether it's a camera, uh, whatever you're using to take a photo, there are essentially nine rules and you read over it while I have a sip of water. On Monday, this is going to be white wine. Okay, so the first rule is, fill the frame and crop out unnecessary clutter and unnecessary noise. And by noise, I don't mean oral noise, I mean physical mess. Um, understand the rule of thirds. If you look at this template, you'll see that the screen is broken up into threes. You get horizontal and you get vertical. And I'm gonna take you through the rule of thirds. But if you speak to most interior designers, they'll often put things in three a cluster of three candles or three frames in a row. Uh, the rule of thirds is very, very important. And, and without realizing it, when you look at photos, you'll now start breaking it up into rules. And your phone comes with a grid as well. So it really does help place at the beginning, especially if you're still learning about rule of thirds, it helps place your photo within the frame, or your, your subject within the frame. Um, use frames to frame your shot. And I'm not talking about a physical wooden frame that you would frame at a printer. I'm talking about framing your shot using shadows, using lines, using tunnels, using trees. We'll go into that shortly as well. I'm just zooming in on my phone here because I've got all my chat bars over my screen and I can't see. Uh, taking advantage of shapes and lines. They are incredible once you get to uh, respect and understand shapes and lines. Know your focus. What are you taking a photo of? What is the main focal point? If you're taking a photo of the dog, and you miss its eye and its nose and get its paw in, make sure it was an intentional thing because otherwise people are going to feel uncomfortable looking at your photo. I'm sure you've all looked, if you put my glasses as an example, if I put glasses on and there's a big fat fingerprint, I'm uncomfortable, I just feel irritable. It's the same as looking at an out of focus photo. So make sure that you've always got your focus nailed because you cannot fix that in post-production, no matter how good you are, or what you're using. Watch your background, make sure that your background is because people are seeing it, it either needs to be blurred out 
or make sure it's not cluttered. Uh, a big example of that is if I take photos of my kids, there's a couple of spots in the house where I feel comfortable enough to have them stand because the rest of my house is just full of laundry and dishes and dog beds. So uh, if you want to take a cute photo of your kids, make sure there's not too much clutter and move them to a space in the house where you know there's good light coming in. Maybe there's a clean wall. As an example, my front door is this lovely shade of blue and I take a lot of my photos of my kids standing in front of the door because I, A, I love the color and B, I know that it's, it's never going to have dishes on it. If I ever get dishes on my front door, we know that lockdown has gone on way too long. Um, sorry, someone said, what happened to rule six? Sorry, uh, we haven't got, oh gosh, yes, must be there somewhere. You're right, one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> Corrosion, you're the first person to have picked this up and I've been doing this talk for several months. That is hysterical, I'm sorry. There's not 10 rules, there's nine rules, like I said. I told you I wasn't good at maths, guys. Okay, really sorry. So uh, the next rule is um, symmetry and patterns. You can create beautiful photos if you look for symmetry and you look for patterns. Creating depth. Uh, photographers love depth. We love ourselves in bokeh. And the bokeh is basically when you your subject is in focus and you get a lovely blurry background. Um, <laughs> Banele says rule six, there are no rules. <laughs> rule six is in lockdown. <laughs> You guys are great. I'm so happy I could see the chat box this time. Oh, that's hysterical. Guys, don't judge me. Uh, honestly, my, my brain feels like it's broken in the last, I don't know how many months. Please, please raise your hands if you also feel incredibly stupid during lockdown at the moment. So, thanks. Thank you. Groshan, who pointed out my errors, was, raised his or her, her hands first. Thank you. Okay. And then the last rule is there are no rules. So don't go out and take a photo. Please don't go out and, and, and go, okay. Is there a line? Is there an angle? Is there a rule of thirds? Is that in focus? Is my background cluttered? Because chances are you would have missed that moment. Play around and start slowly incorporating the rules into your uh, everyday photography. It's the same rule as um, makeup artists will tell you. You can either have a, a smoky eye or a dark lip. You should seldom do both. But again, it looks good on some people. But don't try and force all nine rules into your photo. It'll be exhausting. Uh, and in the next couple of, of, of um, slides, I'm going to take you through the different rules and how I've interpreted them in my iPhone photos. <laughs> Vanille. You guys, I'm going to boot you off. There's a spelling mistake on rule 10. Be <laughs> Yes, beak the rules, everybody. I did that intentionally because I broke the spelling rule. You guys are very rude, hey? Thank goodness the bottle store is open on Monday because you're making me all very sad. I'm kidding. <laughs> right. Okay, Adele wants to know what is the AEAF lock? That's the autofocus lock. So if you want to focus on something, you see that little yellow square. We're going to get into that, Adele. But you can basically lock in your subject to help you get that focus that you, that you need. I hope that answered your question, Adele. Alrighty, so this is where we get into some fun, fun stuff because I'm, I'm going to now show you um, a couple of photo examples that I've taken uh, with the, I've lost my presentation on my phone, my apologies. Okay, so uh, I'm going to take you through photos that I've taken on my iPhone and um, what sort of rules I've used creating them. So this first one was taken on honeymoon in Malaysia. So again, I've been married for seven years, so I was using an old phone. So keep in mind that, Marsha, yes, get the new iPhone 11, but you guys can still make it work with whatever phone you are currently holding in your hand. This was taken from a sun lounger in the middle of an island. It was very awful, shame, it was horrible. I'd hate to be back. Um, and you can see the rule of thirds quite clearly. If you look at the, where the pool ends and then the horizon and the mountains and then the skyline. And there's also symmetry because the palm trees are then reflecting beautifully in the water. So there's the rule of thirds going across with the palm trees and the rule of thirds going uh, horizontally with the, with the, the horizon and the, the water level. So sometimes without looking at something, you, you enjoy the photo, it appeals to you and you don't quite understand why, try and break it down a little bit and understand what it is about that photo that makes it appealing and what would add to it and what would take away from it. Okay. The second photo is, uh, it was taken during lockdown. We had a lot of rain at the beginning of lockdown and I had taken one of my fig leaves outside and I just loved how the raindrops had frozen on this leaf and all I did 
I stood above the leaf, snapped a photo and I cropped it and I enhanced it and I gave it some clarity. And basically there's patterns, there's perspective, there's texture and there's symmetry here with the leaves branching out and the water droplets. Um, and it's just, it's again, not a family or a pet photo, but it's just to show that sometimes a photo of a leaf or a dew drop on a petal can really, really be so striking. And um, the other rule was to fill the frame. So my child's filthy feet playing in that same box as the photo I showed you earlier. You can see it's a kid and you can see it's a box and you can see it's a dirty floor. I didn't have to take a photo of my, of everything around it, of the coffee table and the patio chair and the dog's water bowl. You can see enough of the photo to understand what it is, but it's cropped and it's close enough together and angled in such a way that it makes it a bit more interesting than just me being reminded that I need to clip my then four-year-old's toenails. Um, know your focus. So my daughter has been blessed with, blessed with eyelashes, unlike her mother. And um, she was fast asleep having a nap the one day when she was a little baby and I, I leaned over and she was filthy. You can see she'd been crawling around. I think she was a few, uh, several months old here. And I, I just cropped it off, but I enhanced her eyelashes. So even though you don't see the whole of her head or the rest of her body, you can very easily tell it's a baby and you can easily tell that I wanted to get those beautiful, enviable lashes in focus. Um, this is a, one of my favorite photos. It's of my dad and my daughter at, at um, their bush house. My dad's bush house, not my daughter's bush house. That would be nice. Um, and they were having a fat chat with each other. And I'm sure looking at it now, you can see the rule of thirds with the patio and the decking and then the trees and then the top of the sky. You can also see the rule of thirds, how they placed a little bit to the edge. Um, there's symmetry with the lines and the decking. So again, it's just playing around with, with the photo and not necessarily going, my subject has to be in the middle and there has to be something on either side. Position your subjects to the side, position them at different angles and play around and just have some fun. How did I enhance the eyelashes? Suraj wants to know. Uh, I did it in a Lightroom on my phone and when you convert it to black and white, obviously what's gonna happen is then you can up, and up, up and down your sliders, your black and white sliders. So I enhanced the blacks of the photo. And I think I probably brought down the highlights and the whites a little bit and everything that was dark went a bit um, stronger. You can also enhance clarity. So I'm pretty certain on that photo, I just enhanced the clarity slider. But by converting anything to black and white, you immediately get that lovely definition. And you guys will see going forward that I am, um, I use a lot of black and white in my, in my editing. Again, black and white. So I, um, I always say that this was well worth the Arctic conditions. We were away in Dalstrom and I woke up the one morning and it was incredibly misty. And it, was, it was early, it was about six o'clock in the morning. And I looked out and I saw this exact view and I ran out and I snapped the photo in landscape mode. And I'm, and I'm really glad I took it then because about five minutes later, the sun burnt the mist away and you could see the mountains in the background and a few more trees. But to me, this is just one of my favorite photos because again, it's the rule of thirds. So you can see uh, there's, there's the ground and then there's this beautiful negative space. I love negative space. There's a tree on the one side taking up the rule of thirds. I don't think this would necessarily have been as effective if my tree had been in the middle of the screen. And I converted it to black and white. So it looks quite haunting. It looks... It looks like a, a piece of art. I mean, not that, you know, it's my photo and I enjoy it, but it's, it's, a, it was, it's a lot more attractive than if I had taken it in color at midday with the mountain and the trees and all the other noise uh, showing in the photo. From Vic, that's a stunning shot. Thank you so much, Vic. I appreciate it. So it's all the editing. Um, Suraj, can you show us the Lightroom app? Absolutely, I will. I'm going to get to editing. I think it's point 10. Uh, anonymous attendee, how long would editing take roughly? I'm assuming you're talking about an iPhone photo. This particular photo, a minute. Um, if I'm, but I'm from editing a newborn baby with my professional camera after a studio shoot, and that's two hours per baby, per, per photo. So editing on an iPhone, once you know the tricks and once you can learn how to um, save presets, it's really very quick. But again, the more you do it, the better you get. Okay. Uh, Yondi said, sorry, I didn't understand your explanation of getting additional lenses for your iPhone. Please, could you touch on that again? Sure, Yondi. So somebody asked, you can buy a little clip that clips onto the back of your phone that promises to do a fish eye or a macro or a wide angle effect. 
they're very gimmicky and somebody asked if I thought that they worked and I said I didn't think they worked so you can't really you can't get lenses for your iPhone the lenses that they come with stick with them they are brilliant the new one has three I don't know what it means but it's very fancy and it takes lovely photos but I would say those little clips that you put onto your phone to do different things very gimmicky rather than play around in Photoshop or in editing apps and try and achieve that look elsewhere. Yondi, did that answer your question? Basically, don't do it. Don't spend 200 Rand because if you spend 200 Rand on something for a 25,000 Rand iPhone, we all know the answer. It's not going to work, right? I always say it's lipstick on a pig. Okay. Yondi, I hope that answered your question. Let me know. This is fun. I'm getting the hang of the Q&A thing here. Okay. So here's another example. This is my gorgeous boy child. Um, and he was looking through a tree, pulling his five or four-year-olds pulled his face for photos. And um, this was a really nice example of how I just framed the shot with him in the tree. I cropped it, I converted it to black and white, I added a little bit of grain. And it's a by doing that, I enhanced the background instead of making it a bit cluttered. And you can see here again, not particularly the rule of thirds, but I have framed the shot and I've, I've used leading lines, which means your eyes drawn to the dip of the tree and to my child's beautiful face. Another example is my daughter. I am, um, this was also taken during lockdown, a lot of lockdown photos, uh, leading lines. So the lines of the garage door are leading up, taking you to her eye. Her eye is the main focus um, and I've, cropped out the part you don't need to see because I just wanted to show that and, and her eye. Another golden rule for photography is if you don't know where to focus, always focus on the eye closest to the camera. Make sure that is your focal point um, because otherwise your photo, unless planned and unless there's, there's another focal area, will look uncomfortable to your viewer. Okay, another example here. Uh, and I just want to refer back to my notes because I know I had a specific note about this one. But um, this photo here is, uh, I really enjoyed the, um, the reflection of the, the house on the water. Um, and it's the rules of third as well. So you can see the strip at the bottom of the, the grass and then the, um, the horizon and then the, the house plus the reflection. So it's really nice symmetry. And then what I did is you can see the bush here on the left-hand side. Instead of making the background blurry, I made the foreground blurry and I shot through it to create some depth of field to almost show a little bit of perspective. So this next example shows it better. I love depth of field and I love framing a shot. And over here, this is my son, we were berry picking. And all I did was I walked around to the hedge that he was picking through. And I popped my phone through the bushes so that the bushes were sort of touching on the lens and that made them really nice and blurry. And then I focused on his face. So there's a beautifully framed shot of my son um, and all, all the leaves did here was enhance that frame and actually just give it some interesting depth of field and some interesting perspective as well. Another one, the use of negative space, black and white, rule of thirds, angle, all of this coming together. This is like an all in one. This is the nine, not nine, 10 rules. <laughs> Never gonna live that down. Um, I put my, I tucked my daughter into the bottom left-hand corner of the shot because I wanted to show how little she was. I like the fact that there's this grungy one-year-old on a bike with graffiti. Um, I took it from a higher angle to make her seem a bit small and vulnerable. I added some grain because she's gritty and tough and resilient. And it's just one of my favorite photos of her because it's just such a stark contrast, this little girl in this big teenage boy's um, skate park. Uh, somebody said here, oh, Natasha, are all your pictures taken on portrait? No, Natasha, actually very few are taken on portrait. Um, the last several photos I've taken, I've showed you were taken on just the normal camera setting. A rule about portrait, I love it, but don't try and do it on a, a fast moving child. So I never use it on my two year old. Um, my five year old now can sit still long enough for me to use it on him. Don't try and use it on big groups of people. You're, you can practice maybe on a still life or on, on an older subject because what portrait does is obviously separates your subject from the foreground. And if your subject's moving around all the time, you're going to lose half a feature. They're going to look like Van Gogh with, with the missing ear. So I've actually very seldom take on portrait. I'd rather edit post-production. But every now and again, there's a need for portraits. But to answer your question, no. Um, Kathleen, 
All your pics of your kids are gorgeous, not fair. Well, I'm sure you have beautiful pics, Kathleen. And uh, get in touch. We'll do a shoot on level three. Okay. I do wonderful family photography. And I'm going to teach you how to take beautiful photos of your kids on your iPhone. So go out and practice, guys. There's nothing else for you to do. Nowhere else for you to go. And uh, Natasha, awesome. Thanks. Oh, good. I'm glad I'm answering all your questions. Uh, Brian, is there a rule of thumb regarding black and white photos? My wife always jokes that I overdo it. Brian, do you mean that you edit too many in black and white? Or do you mean that you overdo the black and white? That you make it too severe? Um, I, it, it, it depends on what you like. Some people only have black and white. For, oh, I edit too many in black and white. And then, you know, I'd save one out in color and save one out in black and white and make everyone happy. Um, I, I love black and white. I've launched a new range of shoots called Biggie Smalls where I take massive oversized photos of your kid in black and white and I frame it in the black frame and it's beautiful and I love black and white. I'm going through a black and white phase. It's a personal preference, guys. Some people want a red card. Some people want a white card. There's no wrong or right thing. It's, what's, it's what resonates to you and what looks good to you and what, what fits in with your, with your home. Um, whenever a client comes to me for a shoot or I'm taking a photo of someone, they always say, what do I wear? And I say, well, if you have duck egg bedding and a white wall and you want to frame this for above your bed, maybe don't wear red as an example. So just think about the long-term goal of why you're taking these beautiful photos on your iPhone, what the intention is going to be for, and that also helps with your color palettes and your editing style as well. Oh, Kathleen, my gorgeous pics are from you. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, I know Kathleen. She's a client of mine. This is so nice seeing all my clients here. Kathleen, don't get too good that you don't book me, okay? I love taking photos of you and your gorgeous family. Um, Kathleen and I met when our babies were just born at Baby Massage. Okay, guys. Uh, right. Rule number six, imperfection can be kind of perfect. Let's keep getting that sort of water here. Um, I photograph people every single day of my life, except since the 23rd of March. Um, and I think one of my favorite things about meeting people is, is how different everyone is. A smattering of freckles, a gap between the teeth, um, a bald head, a huge smile, there's something about everybody that makes them attractive, right? And there's a saying that my friend Tasha always used to say is every crooked pot has its crooked lid, which means that imperfections are magnificent. And some of the most famous supermodels, who's the who's the bird with the, the, the eyebrows? I mean, those are 10 years ago would have been considered really unattractive. And now people want big, thick, fat, hairy eyebrows. So look for imperfection in your photos because I can promise you, uh, you are going to take more interesting and more exquisite photos because of it. So I want to talk to you guys about this photo. It is one of, I was, I had just given birth. I was rotund and large and leaking milk. It was hideous. But um, just because you've taken a bad photo, just because you've taken an imperfect photo doesn't mean you should immediately delete it from your camera roll. I'm not saying keep every single photo, but I am saying just look at it and see if you can salvage it. It's a bit like marriage counseling, right? Don't just call it quits. Maybe go and talk it out and see if you can make it work. So a example is this photo here. We were away with the family and my brother and sister-in-law and I, and I popped my phone on the hood of the game vehicle. You can even see on the bottom right of the photo, you can see the, the game vehicle sticking out. It was skew. The sun was behind us. I wanted a lovely golden shot. Of course it didn't work. Um, we were underexposed, just, just a very unattractive photo. And for the sake of this workshop, I pulled it out thinking, I want to show you guys bad photos as well. I don't want anybody to think, well, yeah, she's a professional. Of course, she's only going to take nice photos. Um, so I took this photo out and I immediately converted it to a very high contrast black and white. It, I straightened it, I removed the hood of the car, I overexposed us and I added some grain and suddenly it actually looks like a salvageable photo that's quite a sweet family portrait. Um, another thing I want to say is don't be afraid of grain. Uh, grain is when you can almost see the little spots in your image. Many, many photographers add grain intentionally to their images to make them more interesting. So just because you're, you know, you've had to edit quite a bit and uh, um, lose some clarity and resolution in your photo doesn't mean that it's not a good photo. Um, this is very much a salvageable image. I'm not going to frame it anytime soon, but that's more an issue with my thighs than anything else. Um, 
but just keep in mind that things can be fixed with a little bit of imagination. Okay. I took this photo with the intention of my workshop in mind. I picked my daughter up from school the one day um, and I wanted to, this was with the intention of framing the shot. So I was turning around, I wasn't driving, I was the passenger, but I turned around in the car. I like how I'm acting this out for you guys as if you don't know what turning around in the car is. I turned around in the car and I wanted to shoot her through the headrest. And because she's cheeky and nearly two, she shoved her grubby feet in my face. And that's the first photo I took. And I almost deleted it. And I thought, hang on, I can play around with this a little bit. And I did. I cropped it in to make her the focal point. Uh, and I enhanced her face. And basically what I did is I had created some depth, depth of field with her feet. And it shows these little toddler feet and this cute little face. And to me, it's actually quite a sweet photo. And again, it's an imperfect photo. But it's a memorable photo because of how imperfect it was. And I'll never forget that moment because my first thing was, Piper, just let me take a nice photo of you. And as I said that, she did this. And I mean, anyone else with a two-year-old? They don't let you take nice anything. Come on, guys. No one can have nice things with two-year-olds in the house. A um, couple more questions coming through. Is it better to use the standard photo option or portrait if you take photos of couches, carpets, etc.? Definitely the standard. Um, if you're taking photos of couches and carpets, as an example, you want the whole thing in focus. And it's also one level if you're taking a photo of a, of a couch, uh, of a carpet. So when using the portrait mode, use it on humans, or maybe if you want to take a photo of a rose with a blurry background or of something. But with a couch, there's no focal point. The couch is the focal point unless you're taking your couch from far away and you want to blur out the messy lawn in the background, but use a standard image for product photography. So Raj wants to know, how do you add natural grain? By editing too much, you're going to add grain. Also, if you're shooting in low light, your camera is going to overcompensate and add grain just to help you get a better photo. And you can also add grain in post-production on some editing apps. Uh, Suraj, is the black and white preset something you do afterwards? Yes. A few people always say, do, you, do I shoot in black and white? No. I open my camera app, take a photo. Beautiful. Of all my chins, I then go in and I edit it afterwards and I add in all these different things. Um, Adele wants to know, and a flat lay also standard. How do you take the perfect flat lay? Oh, Adele, uh, always standard. Um, I love flat lay photography. Flat lay photography is when you style things on a board, a flower and a notebook and a laptop and a pen and a whatever, and you take a photo from above and you crop it. And it's a really nice way to showcase brand things. As a photographer, I often take it if I get new props, I'll lay them out and I'll take a flat lay. Uh, you need your lighting to be consistent for a flat lay. You need to take it from above and you need to make sure that your aperture is quite high and that you're not shooting on portrait mode. Okay. Now, how did I get her face so sharp in the black and white photo, Chelsea? Um, let's go back there. Yes. Well, Chelsea, this is why, just because it looked imperfect doesn't mean it's not salvageable. It actually is in focus in the color. It's just that there's so much else that's distracting. You can't see close enough. Black and white also really gives a very, very nice clarity. And that photo that I showed at the beginning of when she was born and my husband took that photo, it was an awful photo in color, but for some reason, black and white just enhances and it adds more clarity and more contrast and it does really salvage an image. So Chelsea, I hope that answers your, hope that answers your question. Kathleen, what apps do you use for editing? I'm gonna answer those at my editing thing. Uh, Annette, please give us tips on interior photography. Annette, this is a family thing. So if I went down that uh, road, I think, I'd probably be deviating too much, but I love uh, I love your question. So I'm happy to chat afterwards, but basically light, light, light. If you're shooting something indoors, always make sure there's natural light coming in. Open the curtains, lift the blinds, uh, make sure there's enough natural light coming in. Uh, try not to turn your overhead lights on because it might make things too yellow. Um, and try place your subject in front of a window so that the light's coming into it and it's, it's basically like having a, your own personal um, LED light. Hope that answers you, Annette, and hope that helps you. Right, rule number seven, know thy iPhone and know thy neighbor in case they have spare wine during lockdown. And for those smokers, in case they have a ciggy as well. Hey. Okay, so uh, you are all here because you have an iPhone, I'm assuming. So there's a lot of different buttons and, and things on your camera app that you may not be familiar with. And I must be honest, when I went from the 10 to the 11, 
And the one night I wanted to take a photo of my kids in the bath with glow sticks and I couldn't for the life of me figure out how to turn the flash off. Um, and I know that sounds completely ridiculous because an iPhone is an iPhone, right? It's really not. The new iPhone comes with so many added features that it is worth your while playing around and understanding what they do and why they do it before you start shooting. But in a nutshell, most iPhones have a grid mode and that's when you open the camera and you can see those lines going uh, um, vertically and those lines going horizontally that's the grid mode and that's if you're shooting landscape it helps you almost position you know if you want things to be straight hdr which is when your phone will take a rapid succession of photos and merge them to give you the best possible output you can edit live photos there's portrait mode which we've discussed there's the 0.5 the one and the two so that's the standard the um, wide angle and the close-up there's time lapse which is really cute if you've got a puppy um or your kids are running around the garden and you want to show how busy they are but compress it into 10 seconds. I also use time lapse a hell of a lot when I'm doing a shoot in my studio. I'll put it on and then I'll time lapse a one hour session into two minutes just to show me wrapping the baby and organizing everything. Uh, there's slow mo, which is super cute. Let's say you've got your baby running for the first time and you get them running and then they slowly end up towards you. Um, normal video, normal photo, there's square, which is when you can shoot in square mode. And then there's the pano as well. Somebody earlier asked about the pano, uh, the square mode. Square is amazing if you are shooting for Instagram. Um, often if you take a photo with the aim of putting it on Instagram, you'll find that because Instagram is a square feed, you're gonna crop something off. So if I've got a photo of my daughter, I'm either gonna crop her head off or her legs off or something. So if you only want to take the photo for Instagram, take it in square mode because then that's already sized for your image because then you, by, by sizing it in Instagram, after having taken a normal sized photo, you, you might lose your rule of thirds a little bit by cropping it and then they're in the middle or not on the side anymore. But just keep in mind that for printing purposes, don't take them all in square because then if you do want to print them in a eight by 10 or a 15 by 10 or whatever it is, you are going to have a, a cropped off border. So um, I hope that answered your question about when to take square and when not to take square. If you're taking something that's not really moving or you've got time to play around with like a flat lay or like an obliging child, take one in square and take one in full normal focus, uh, normal camera angle mode, just so you've got both. And then the one is specific for Instagram as well. Right, selfies must fall. Who's with me? Yeah, thought so. These selfies are fine. Hey, hey, I took one before. I normally always take one at my talks, so and now I can't. I, I feel lame taking a photo of the back of my of my computer. But this is a fun selfie. I was hosting a workshop here, reviewing a new lipstick, drinking one of many gin and tonics when I had gin at the beginning of lockdown. But guys, as mo and moms and dads and people, you cannot be in selfies for the rest of your photographic life because these selfies are all you will have for your kids to remember you by. I mean, I look at these and I just want to shake my head. You just want a nice photo with you and your kids. There's post baby belly hanging out. There's the sun in our eyes. He's squinting. I've got puke on my top. My daughter wasn't making eye contact with the camera. I mean, the list goes on. My dog was jumping in my face with a tennis ball. Guys, and girls, moms and dads, dads, please, it's Father's Day. So for Father's Day, do something for your wives and take, take the damn photo. All right. You guys need to start getting in more photos because moms and dads and everyone watching, if you ever go missing, this is all people are going to put on your, on your poster. That's also ironically the last time I had my hair done almost a year ago to the day. Selfies must fall. They are fun. They can be really, really cute. But please, my, my request to you, is next time you go out or you are anywhere, go up to somebody and say, please can I take a photo of you and your family at the zoo or the waterfall or the circus or the mall or a restaurant or with your masks on or doing your six to 9 a.m. walk. And then say, please will you take a photo of me, pick up your phone, wipe down your lens, give them the camera and say, please take a photo of me. Because if you don't ask, you don't get, and you all need to start being in your own photos as well as taking photos. Suraj, do I use pano much? Never, Suraj, can't. I don't know what it is about my brain that makes my panos look like um, a Salvador Dali painting. I'm useless at them, so no. Um, okay, questions uh, from Natasha. Who else will take these amazing pics if not us? 
Exactly, you've got to ask people, train people up, teach your spouse how to take an amazing photo. Right, smooches. Point number nine, we're nearly done, I promise. Keep it simple, Susan. Apparently Susan, I feel so sorry for people with the name Susan, they get such a bad rap. I have spoken about rules, I've spoken about lighting, about angles, about composition, about children, about subject matter, and please don't leave your feeling pressured. At the end of the day, keep it simple, right? Remove distractions and have a go-to photo zone. I mentioned earlier that my front door is one of my favorite go-to photo zones. Um, I also love photographing when my kids are in the bath because I normally there's normally bubble bath and the bath is white. And so you can't see their naked bodies and there's nothing inappropriate, but white creates a beautiful canvas for images to pop. Now imagine my son in the bath here with a little yellow rubber duck or a white wall and your kid in a quirky pair of gum boots. If you're Backdrop is clean and uncluttered. You can get a really, really nice photo. So find a spot in your house where there's no stuff. You've got, got stuff, handbags and pot plants and dogs bowls and all of that. Find a couple of areas where it's clutter free. Even outside, there might be a wall that gets lovely afternoon light. And there might be a piece of screening where you can take a photo from above. Just keep it simple and don't and try not to over clutter your image unless it's an intentional clutter. This was my daughter when I just built my studio a little over a year ago. Um, and it was a brightly lit white studio and she popped her head around and I took a photo and it's clean and uncluttered and I just love her little face peeking through. And to date, it's one of my absolute favorite photos of her because it's so innocent and so clean. Um, I, I don't know what I had planned for her that day. Her hair's in a bit of a mohawk. So the fact that it was brushed, I'm, I may have been planning a photo where I just had energy that day but clean spaces and neutral backgrounds really, really work. So if you are taking a photo of your family indoors, pop them on the bed with some clean linen, make sure that they're facing some window light um, and start snapping away. Um, just keep things as uncluttered as possible, just to give yourself the best possible outlook. Uh, question, when I take a photo, I get two pictures, one named HDR, why? Okay, Johan, you've got the HDR setting on. So if you go into your camera, I have to sort of look at this. Um, Sorry, I'll find it, but you've got HDR activated on your phone. So somewhere at the top, you'll see there's a little button. Um, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It just means you're gonna have more photos in your camera roll. You might run out of space. Just deactivate the HDR setting on your phone. Again, removing the clutter. This was in my daughter's nursery. Um, the, the cupboard, the, the compactum was, was filthy. I think I just changed a poo nappy. There were toys, there was teething rings, there was dummies. So I asked my husband to lift her up and, and face her into the mirror. And then I took a photo from the side and I just love the depth of field. She's a, you can see her twice. Um, she's a little bit blurry at the background. I can see her face in, in contrast. The wall and the, the, the reflecting wall behind her was quite clean. And so you don't actually see what's really going on was my toddler son running around, a filthy compact and clothes, dogs, just general, you know, family of four chaos. Marsha, did you do that family pic edit through iPhone's editing features only or a separate app? Marsha, I'm not sure which question you're referring to, uh, but I either edit on my phone or I edit on Lightroom on my phone and I will take you through my, my top four or five editing apps after this. Um, Michael, so the camera should be behind the natural light or in front. The camera, the natural light should be shining on your subject, Michael. So if my if you guys watching me if my computer is a light i want the light on me which means the camera has to be facing the same direction as the light if that makes sense so that the light is coming in me and i'm taking a photo if i was doing this and taking a photo of myself behind me and the light was facing me um I'm trying to figure out if that's the if that's the right way to explain it. Then I would be overexposed. So you always want your the light to fall naturally on your subject's face, but not direct sunlight because then they're going to be squinting. So always try and filter it through something. Those people who have those um, houses with the windows and those white gauzy curtains and then other curtains, open the other curtains and keep those white gauzy curtains closed. Stand in front of those white gauzy curtains and take a selfie and then take it from with the white gauzy curtains behind you and the first photo will be magnificent because you've basically put a diffused filter on your face as opposed to taking it the other way and you, you've got a horrible backlit and your face will be too dark. I hope, um, thank, uh, Michael says thanks, that explains for me. Brilliant, okay. So our last and final point, editing. 
this is where you've all been asking so many questions. Um, I'm, and I do apologize profusely because no longer will you ever take a photo and just load it again. You will edit. Uh, and for a multitude of reasons, not because the iPhone photo isn't good enough, because you will learn what your unique style and brand is. If you follow certain photographers, you'll, you can sometimes immediately see what is a Kate Rankin photography photo versus what is another photography's photo. And that's the editing style. Um, I'm not saying go and completely change the way you look or your clients look. Nobody wants that. Um, and I don't love filters, but I'm a big fan of enhancing. It's like putting makeup on. I can't remove my entire face, but I can enhance and put mascara on and some lipstick and, and just make my, myself look like a better version of me. So the same applies for editing. You can take a photo that is nice and you can make it into something well, just with a few steps. This is a photo of a tree, obviously. It's not particularly exciting, but I kept it in because I wanted to show you guys the difference between a tree and a tree that's been slightly cropped, converted to black and white and enhanced. Suddenly it's, the clouds look all swirly whirly and the clouds look a little bit uh, ominous and threatening. Um, the tree looks quite striking and, and, it's, and it's more of a statement piece now than just a tree and a photo that I probably would have deleted at a later stage. Okay, so, <clears throat> excuse me. These are a couple of apps that I love, um, that I love editing on, and they're all available on your iPhone. And I'm gonna take you through them now, but you can all just have a read while I have more, more water. So there are a ton of apps out there and I'm always looking for new apps, but don't go and download a hundred because you're never gonna use a hundred. Download a few that you'll use consistently. If I had to be completely honest with you, I'd say I only use three. I use the photo, the, the photos app on my iPhone to do slight tweaks and cropping and um, black and white conversions. I use uh, Lightroom, which is my personal favorite. And I use layouts for collage creation for certain things. I don't necessarily believe in collages, but they do have their time and their place. The other great app, which is one of the first guys that came out that's still superb is Snapseed. Uh, Visco. Uh, has really nice filters if you're into sort of film-like filters. And then of course, Instagram has come a very long way from when they first launched and you could have that horrible black sort of Polaroid looking block around it to really, really nice filters for, for um, photos. One more thing on editing is if you are a influencer or they call them influencers, or if you are somebody looking to create your own brand and look and feel on your Instagram. Try and keep your edits similar so that when people scroll through, there's a very consistent look and feel to the way you edit photos. I say that with a disclaimer, I was scrolling through an influencer's um, Instagram recently and they were making guacamole and I couldn't understand why the ever was blue, but they'd, if they hadn't adjusted their preset to change that and to allow for that. So just be, don't be so rigid in your filters that your avocado turns blue as an example, but do try and keep a consistent feed. It's also really nice at a later stage for printing or photos so things look like they belong to each other. Uh, Gary says from Ozita on YouTube, brand alignment is key to editing styles. Completely agree, Gary. That's, I think that's hopefully what I was trying to, to get across is if you look at iStore, it's black and white. You, can, you know immediately, if you look at an Apple product, you know exactly that you're looking at an Apple product. So if you are a brand, if you want to start a brand, if you just want to sort of get a consistent look and feel across your social media profiles, make sure that you stay consistent with everything you do um, and all the editing that you do as well. I'm just now going to take you through a couple of photos of uh, before and afters. So SOOC stands for straight out of camera, so as in you take the photo and that's what it looks like. And then I'm going to explain to you what app I used and how I edited it. So this is my daughter in a chair. Cute photo. I could make it cuter. I took it into Lightroom on my phone. I cropped it. I added a high contrast black and white. And to me, it just really made her features pop. Um, pop a lot more and it made a bit more of a statement piece because I quite like the leading lines there. Okay, not a great photo, but I have so few family photos that this is the best one I could find. It was my daughter's birthday party and my patio was filthy and it was just complete chaos. Um, very nice photo, be, fine if I hadn't done anything to it, but I did, I straightened it, I cropped it and I added my own saved preset to it because I added it to my Instagram and my Instagram is quite light and airy. So um, 
you can't change that my two-year-old wasn't impressed with the photo. You literally cannot change certain things, but you can enhance and tweak. And that's what I'm saying. I haven't completely changed. I haven't teeth whitened. I haven't done anything, but I've just slightly enhanced it to fit in with my own personal brand. This was quite a, she was in full shade here, my daughter, um, and it's quite a dark photo. And I wanted to keep it quite moody. She was born with these birthmarks in here. You can still see them on her head. She had a grubby nose, a grubby face. She was climbing in trees. And I wanted to just enhance this tomboy nature of my little girl um, with her messy hair and her big, beautiful eyes. And so I converted it to black and white. I added a bit of a matte effect. And, and I, I think I cropped it here as well. And it's just a much more striking photo. From Michael, would you rather edit or use presets? So I uh, photographers will use presets, especially if we're doing mass um, editing. So if I shoot a family shoot, I will edit a couple of photos. I will then save out that preset and apply it to all my photos and then do various tweaks. On Lightroom, you can create a preset as well. That being said, it doesn't always work across all photos. Some photos are naturally lighter straight out of camera. So if I apply my save preset, I've lost the photo because it's too bright. So I use presets, but I, 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 I still tweak them according to where the photo was taken, the lighting, the conditions, and what I'm using it for. So don't just use a preset. Um, your gut will tell you, your eyes will tell you if you should tweak it or change it or play around a little bit. I hope that answers your question, Michael. Um, I don't believe in collages. I, I feel like you should find one beautiful photo and share that one beautiful photo as opposed to just too many, it's too cluttered um, and you, you're overwhelming your audience. That being said, when my dog was a puppy, he was lying on my lap and he, 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 he had the most quizzical, he still does, uh, facial expressions. And I wanted to document all four. So I took these four separate images on my phone. I then popped them into Lightroom and I added a lot of clarity just to make his fur and his coloring pop, enhance the clarity. And then I put them in a collage because to me, this is a really sweet way of showing how, you know, my puppy changed faces in just a couple of, of different poses. Kim, do you use Zoom or rather getting close? Oh, Kim, I don't know who you are, but I love your question. I'm going to answer it next. It's one of my favorite questions. When to collage? So time lapse memories. Let's say you want to compare your son at one week to one year. Or you want to compare your daughter and your son or your kids, you know, how separated at birth or simply to embarrass your husband. Um, sometimes collages are really, really cute. I wouldn't say do it all the time. Think long term, think printing. If you're going to print out an eight by 10 or a jumbo size print and there's nine photos in there, it's just going to look quite messy. So I would rather only collage to do something cute and intentional like a before and after. It always reminds me of a very Mark ad where they had season and then season those sort of things. Sorry if there's any Susans here. I don't know why we all hate on the name Susan. It's actually a very nice name. I know a lot of lovely Susans. Okay, so we're done, but I just wanted to share a couple of my tips and my tricks for you and to hopefully make this a little bit easier. Is everyone still around? Are you still happy? Are you still listening? Am I making sense? Can I have some thumbs up? Are you with me? Oh, good. Thank you, guys. Oh, good. Everyone is raising their hands. Thank you. Okay, stop raising your hands. I can't see my screen. I'm kidding. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right, so I just wanted to leave you with a couple of things to do and things not to do. Size for the photo you want. We spoke about that. We spoke about shooting. In If you're shooting a panorama, just keep in mind if you ever want to print that out. Um, if you're shooting a square for Instagram, keep in mind if you ever want to print that out. Look, I know a lot of printing companies now squint, uh, squint spray print square. So um, it's not a train smash, but just keep in mind that whatever you shoot at, whatever size, that's how it's going to be saved out. You can always make it smaller, you can't make it bigger. Remember the rule of thirds? Kim, you said, do I zoom or rather getting close? My number one rule, if you take nothing away with you today, is zoom with your feet. If I open up my camera up here, you can all see here, right? and I zoom in like this, it's just going to get grainier and, and grainier and grainier. If you can, open up your camera and walk towards your subject and take the photo. You're not going to lose resolution. You're not going to lose clarity. I'm sure you've all had a case where there's been a beautiful bird in your tree. I've done it as well. And I know that by the time I get my telescopic zoom lens for my camera, that bird's gone. So I open up my phone and I like zoom in, zoom in. And oh, guys, look at this beautiful gray dot that landed on my conifer tree. I mean, 
you're going to lose quality. So when you can zoom in with your feet, it makes a hell of a difference to the quality of your photo. Um, and professionally, I only ever shoot with a prime lens, um, which means my, my lens physically does not zoom. I have to walk to my subject and walk away. So I've often, and I've got a few clients here who I'm sure will be nodding their heads. I'm like, just stand in the bushes there. Go back. Doesn't matter if you stand on a snake. No, no, go in, walk. And I make them stand in the middle of salt grass because I can't go any further back. Otherwise, I'm falling in the river. So it's worth it. It's really worth it. And I personally believe in zooming with your feet. Uh, shoot in square. I spoke about shooting in square for Instagram. Use your camera options. Play around with your camera options. Somebody earlier mentioned night mode. It's superb for taking photos in low light. I love to take photos of my kids when they're sleeping so stupid you want them to sleep the whole day and then you go and wake them up by taking a photo of them but the night mode allows you to take a lovely photo of your kids sleeping without the flash waking them up the side shutter button guys can uh oh, i've got a flash on that's hideous it's not nice, eh? you can use the side shutter button wrong side sorry i'm nowhere uh to actually snap the image so um in, if, if you're taking a selfie and your arm wobble is too much and you can't push the middle shutter button, you can activate the side button on your camera to activate the, the shutter. Uh, bribe people, bribe your kids, just get in the photos. Uh, the amount of times clients come and I say, please bring a snack, offer them a juice, offer them a Smartie, offer them a Mari biscuit. My children get bribed more than you care to know for these photos. That photo of my daughter with an eye over her face, guys, she turned two in March. I think she had an Easter egg and a kilogram of raisins to say thank you after that. Use your light, find good light, have soft diffuse light shining on you, but don't also be scared to backlight and to create silhouette photos. Back up your photos. Somebody asked us at the beginning. I pay a premium and I don't mean a premium in, in that it's expensive. I think I pay 50 rand a month for iCloud and it's worth every single scent. I can snap away and not have to stress a friend of mine can never take a photo. She can never find a photo. She hasn't updated her, her photos in years because of that exact reason. And eventually I convinced her to um, sign up to iCloud. So get iCloud for your phone and everything else. It is worth it. I have a two terabyte Dropbox account. My business is photography. So I save all my photos there. But a, a takeaway coffee is what? 30, 40 Rand, guys. You can afford to not to do that and rather back up these most precious precious memories shoot delete repeats uh to get a good photo of my kids i would say i take 10 12 um photos per scene go through it delete half edit some delete the rest keep one or two otherwise you're going to end up like me at the beginning of lockdown going through icloud i'm still on i think 2018 going through my icloud trying to delete all my old photos share your memories guys print them Get books done, post them. Um, what's the point of taking all these beautiful photos and not having anything? I'm in the process of making myself my photo books. I do it for all my clients, but you know, it's like the, the shoemaker's son who has no shoes. I have no photos. So that's my resolution. Focus your camera manually and keep your lens clean. Uh, Benele says iCloud is the best. I use it and cannot complain about the price at all. Benele, I agree. It's very, very reasonable. Uh, yeah, and you can upgrade or downgrade at any time. It's fantastic. Um, so Raj says, any tips for how to always be able to find a photo easily? Yeah, it's a tough one. So you can tag faces. And uh, my Oma, my granny turned 96 last week and I wanted to find some photos of her. So if you go into a photo, you can add the name and then it collects facial recognition on your camera roll and you can pull up all the photos of mom or all the photos of Kate. Or um, you can also look by date. So at the bottom of your camera roll, you can look through album, you can look through date, you can look through month, you can go very granular. I also like sometimes going onto iCloud.com into my photos and then it's bigger. So I can go, I remember we went away in November of 2019. You can go onto the desktop app and look at the bigger icons to see which photos that I really want. Um, Katlejo says, she shares a birthday with my child. Katlejo, you must be amazing. I like you already. Um, most of all, guys, have fun, man. It's art. You've got art and you've got the potential at your fingertips. This is this is what it's all about. It's just having fun, capturing moments, capturing memories, and you can't go wrong. What's the worst that can happen is you take too many photos and you have to delete some. Uh, luckily, we're not in a day of 35 malls where you have to buy film and pop it in and hope the sun doesn't touch it. It's all very terrifying and overwhelming. Um, 
Really, guys, this was such fun. Thank you. If you enjoyed this, please go like my pages. Please go like my work. Please phone me for a shoot. Ask me for help, for advice. Um, I just love, I love sharing my knowledge uh, and I'm all about community over competition. There's a couple of us photographers in Joburg who just believe that sharing is caring. There's enough of us to go around, but please get in touch if you want to shoot after lockdown. If you have any questions, Kate Rankin Photography is my Instagram page for my lifestyle and wedding and lifestyle work. Uh, Slumberlings is my fine art newborn work and Kate Nicole Kearney is my private work. So if you're not completely overseeing photos of my children, that's where you can find photos of my children. <laughs> any more questions before we end off? Guys, this was really such fun. Thank you. Um, how do you tag the person in a photo in iPhone? Siraj says, oh, I figured it out the other day. You have to go onto the photo and then you click, I think, info and it'll highlight the face and it might already say, is this Kate? Confirm yes or no or add a name and then you add that person. Play around with the photo. I think it's the info or the I or the three dots or something at the top. I can't quite remember now. Um, Thank you, Monica. Oh, Monica, so nice to have you here. Thank you, Monica. That's awesome. It's very, very lovely to see all these familiar names and faces pop up. Thank you, Johan. Thank you, Marisa. Thank you, Carlos. Uh, thank you, Adal. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Shelly. Do I ever use the camera inside the app? Do you ever use the camera inside the app? Sorry, Michael, I'm not sure what that question means. Tamsin, thank you so much, Kate. Amber has enjoyed watching this all the way from Dubai. Oh, I hope it's warmer in Dubai than it is in Joburg. She's been doing photo competitions for homeschooling and she's enjoyed learning some new things. Hello, Amber. If I recall correctly, I think Amber is probably seven or eight years old. So maybe my youngest attendee. Um, thanks, Tamsin. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, it's been an actually treat not seeing you and you seeing me and whatever my, I, I think I talk like this a lot. Please get in touch. Uh, let me know if you want to shoot. I've got tons of specials and promotions running and wishing you all, I don't know what, good wine, good health, good company, good Netflix, good homeschooling experience during the rest of lockdown. And please get in touch if you guys ever have any questions. And thank you. And I'm going to say it's one of those awkward goodbyes where I have to figure out how to hang up. But um, thank you and goodbye. And uh, stay in touch, guys. Go like my work. Bye. Mwah.